Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, I appreciate everybody who, of course, has been in the house uh, watching us with our live stream earlier today. Um, I want to, uh, actually, I need to trim uh, the section out. My computer crashed. Um, I'm using my gaming laptop, um, which is basically pimped out about beyond what it's it's made to do. It's got four screens that are on it. It's got a mixer. It's got a, a streaming deck and a couple of different cameras and stuff. So sometimes when you're doing, of course, um, a Zoom call and live streaming and watching the feed, it's just like we're tired. And it just goes ahead and just, you know, has issues. I think what I'm going to end up doing is getting a desktop to go here at the Red Brick House since I am here quite as often as I am to prevent that from happening in the future. Anyway, but in the meantime, we're doing this with our laptop. But what was interesting was listening to Leo Bridgewater. Leo, who is a Eagles fan, and some people are like, oh, God, it's Leo and stuff. But he's good people. And unlike Philly 500, he's not scared to go to Dallas for the Dallas uh, Eagles game. So he's going to be there uh, with us. So if you want to meet Leo and everything else and find out about, you know, getting high, uh, you can definitely come down and check that out. And I hope I hope to make that a big event. Um, I hope that I can um, shame Philly 500 into going as well. Anyway, um, there was a clip in there where he literally said, if we had Dak Prescott, I guarantee you, we win the Super Bowl. And I was just like, wow. And going through, and once it's ingested from YouTube, I'll be sure to bring that clip to you because, you know, you you got somebody looking from the outside uh, in versus people that are on the inside that just say he's a garbage-ass quarterback. And I'm just sitting here looking at this. Hawk Mania has the top 10 quarterbacks with the most touchdown passes in the last two years. And keep in mind, people talk about how bad Dak was the year before with the broken thumb where he missed four games. Um, Dak Prescott is fourth with 59. Fourth. And he was short four games. Pat Mahomes has 68. Josh Allen has 64. Uh, Jared Goff has 59 tied with Dak Prescott. Tua, 54. And Geno Smith, 50. So there you have it. Um, in talking to people, and Walker Wade is, man, Walker Wade is, he is just like so down on the team and everything else with Jerry Jones and not doing anything and so on. And that's another thing that um, Leo went through and said, you know, your team stinks because you're owner. You don't do anything to try and help it. So I'm like, if you're saying the team stinks because of it, then why do you blame Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott? If you're saying he's like, you know, you, know, you, you kind of put it out there. And I, as much as I hate to say that an Eagle fan is 100% right, he's 100% right. Um, the questions are, you know, you may not like the Cowboys philosophy, but they're looking and saying, you know, maybe we just got a mental problem of winning in the playoffs. But we're at least getting to the playoffs. That's, you know, part that a lot of teams didn't do. Half of the NFL didn't do that. And they've done it three years in a row. And maybe it's just a matter of getting it, getting a metal edge. Now, some people look and say that the Cowboys offensive line is in, you know, is in trouble. Because we ended up losing um, Biotis and Tyron Smith. And I'll point back to you guys back when we lost Amari Cooper. We lost Cedric Wilson, Lyle Collins. And um, uh, Connor Williams. Yeah. And we ended up having Terrence Steele become a starter after a rookie year that was like ass ass. I believe that's when we got Biotish as well. And we had a Jason Peters that played on the offensive line. And I look at this offensive line and say, we're not starting over like that one did. I will say that I think Terrence Steele should be better than he was last year or another year removed from the ACL. Zach Martin and Tyler Smith 
around the center. And, you know, if Cooper BB is not ready to be the guy, we have Brock Hoffman, who started three games last year, and I dare say played as good, if not better, than Biotis. So I don't think that the center position is going to take a step back for everybody that's out there that we lost two starters. Um, yeah, we did. We lost two starters. Um, Tyron Smith was good. He still missed three games last year. But we have gone through years in the past three where Tyron Smith has only played a few games and made it. So I don't think that this is going to be as bad a doom and gloom on the offensive line like everybody thinks. Now, here's the good news is you have a guy who has been there at playing tackle as well as guard, who's an all-pro now mentoring Tyler Guyton. Tyler Smith is kind of giving him the secrets because you know that Tyler Guyton has moved from being the right side offensive tackle to now being Dak Prescott's blind side on the left side. But what some people may not realize is he was still on the blind side because the quarterback that he blocked for was left-handed. So he's looking this way, which means he was still facing the best edge rushers on the right-hand side. Now, that's not to say there's not a major adjustment going from one side to the other. It's like, you know, uh, Mike McCarthy says, it's like wiping your ass with your right hand and then trying to do it with your left. I'm not going to quite go that far. I'll say, you know, if you're right-handed, right with your right hand, now try and right with your left. That's the type of adjustment because everything is reversed. Your first step when you're on the right side is you're stepping with the right foot. Now you're on the left side. Now you're stepping with the left foot and you're using your left arm as your punch arm as opposed to your right. So there is a learning curve to go with that. But here's where I'm not quite as worried because the Cowboys do a bit of 12 personnel. They can put one of their tight ends out there to help chip. And if they don't need it, he can become a pass catcher. You've got now one of the best blocking running backs back in Zeke Elliott. And I think that that was more the move for the Cowboys to bring him back to be more of a blocker than necessarily a running a runner. Um, I keep trying to remind people because everybody's going crazy and saying, we need running back, we need running back. Mike McCarthy's M.O. has not been to rely on the run. It's been more run by committee before it was cool to be run by committee. And see, here's where you have to understand. The years Mike McCarthy has had lights out running backs have been actually some of the worst years that he's had. Years where he's had less running and less than a thousand yard rusher they've been more successful. So I'm going to say, for everybody out there saying that the Cowboys are going to suck, you know, the reality is nobody really knows what's going to happen. Remember last year, people had uh, the Jets as a Super Bowl favorite and first series of the season, Aaron Rodgers gets jacked up, his Achilles tears, and then their season goes to crap. Nobody really knows. We can speculate because that's all it really is. What's going to happen? We just really got to wait and see. But I don't think the Cowboys are as bad as everybody thinks. All right, good people. I will see you guys later. Peace.